The man Becky Lynch has been doing numerous media interviews while promoting her book, and we have plenty of news from those. Kicking things off with Becky Lynch commenting on Mercedes Monet's AEW contract. In speaking to the Orlando Sentinel regarding Mercedes' contract with AEW, which according to a recent issue of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, would make Mercedes one of the highest paid women in professional wrestling. Becky Lynch had this to say about it. I think that's an important part, getting paid equally for the equal work and the equal position we are at right now. Women's evolutions and revolutions are fine and well, but making sure that they equate to contracts and financial reward for these things when we are doing equal work is hugely important. Additionally, Becky also appeared as a guest on the MMA Hour with Ariel Helwani. During the appearance, Becky Lynch revealed that she is in the final two months of her current contract with WWE. Becky said that talks about a contract renewal have not yet begun. Though she mainly played coy when Ariel Hawani asked about her contract, she said she doubts this is her last WrestleMania. Becky is challenging Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship at WrestleMania 40. Hawani did ask her if she felt disrespected that she doesn't have a new deal in front of her yet. To which she said, at this stage in the game, contrary to a lot of thoughts in this book of where I was coming up, I am so confident in my ability and my worth, adding that she wasn't worried. Also on the MMA Hour, Becky Lynch was asked about Ronda Rousey, in which Becky said that Ronda Rousey was mishandled in WWE. Becky believes part of the issue may have been that management had too much confidence in her wrestling ability. To which she said, She was coming off of a different industry. She was a star and she should have been handled differently in terms of, I think she had such a great first outing that everybody thought, oh, she can wrestle. I mean this with respect, but she couldn't wrestle. What we do isn't something that you can just have one good match and then, Okay, yeah, I'm off to the races. It's a craft and you have to learn your craft and you have to be diligent about learning your craft. But everybody treated Rhonda like she already knew it because when she first came in, she was good in that first bout. But she was also working with Kurt Angle. She was working with Triple H, Stephanie McMahon. It was a well-rehearsed match because everybody wanted her to succeed. And then it was like, okay, she can do this off to the races. And that was mishandling her because she was a star in her own right and she'd done so much for MMA. So in terms of that and booking, that wasn't done well. But my experience coming from nobody thinking that I was going to be worth anything and making myself very valuable to the company and very valuable to wrestling in general, it's because I loved it. Because I loved it and I sought out to do it. She came in and I think she found a place that she enjoyed, she liked, but she never sought to do it from a young age. And I think that changes the experience you have when you go into a place. Ronda Rousey has also been doing media rounds to promote her book, Our Fight, which is being released on April 2nd. Becky Lynch's book, The Man, Not Your Average Average Girl, is already being sold. On to our next story. Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes are officially set to headline NXT's WrestleMania weekend special. While speaking with Sports Illustrated, Shawn Michaels confirmed that the grudge match between Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams will go last at Stand and Deliver. The show is taking place from Philadelphia's Well Fargo Center on Saturday, April 6. It has a noon Eastern start time airing live on the Peacock prior to WrestleMania 40 night one. On to our next story. Ace Austin will remain with TNA Wrestling after signing a new contract. In an interview that I dropped today, Ace Austin confirmed that he has re-signed with TNA Wrestling. He did not disclose the length of the deal. The 27-year-old debuted with TNA in June 2018 and wrestled there sporadically before signing his first contract there in 2019. Here's what Ace Austin had to say about why he chose to re-sign with TNA Wrestling. So Ace, with that being said, you're mentioning that you have been with the company for five, six years. Are you looking to remain with TNA or is there any part of you that wants to explore free agency? I'm definitely looking to stay with TNA because um, being with TNA allows you freedom that doesn't exist anywhere else. If I stay with TNA, my options are still open uh, uh, in the whole world. I mean, there's, there's no working relationship that TNA is not open to, to having. And I love that. That's like, that's been one of the huge selling points for me since I first started was the freedom. And, um, I am, am, I'm actively working on putting together some, some, well, being a part of some acting and like stunt projects 
this year. And it's a, it's a, it's a realm I really want to get a taste of. And uh, the only place I can really do that effectively is TNA. And um, not, not even just that it's, 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 it's unfinished business. It's, it's uh, you know, three-time X division champion, two-time tag team champion. There's still one missing. And it means a lot to me to, to complete that collection. Um, and, you know, when there's still uh, opportunity on the table, uh, you know, you got to reach the peak before you can look towards the next peak. And, uh, and, and, and I'm still climbing. As he mentioned, he has unfinished business, and that unfinished business is going for the TNA World Championship. Here's his thoughts on that. Uh, I had such a huge goal back in 2019-20 to become the youngest, uh, you know, Impact Wrestling World Champion of all time. And, um, you know, I got so close, and I, I really can't let that one get away from me. Um, I looked up to guys like Jeff Hardy, you know, when I first started guys that weren't the, uh, they, they didn't fit the mold, you know, they did it on their own merit and, um, they, they became legends based off of who they were. And that's, that's kind of what it means, you know, to me, I, I, growing up, I was always, um, I didn't hit my growth spurt, you know, if you, until, oh man, my uh, junior year of high school, my 11th grade year of high school. So, so all the way up until 10th grade, I was always, uh, you know, such a, sh I was a short kid and um, I tried so hard uh, to let my personality be bigger than that uh, so that people didn't look at me that way. And I think I always did a pretty good job. I didn't really get like bullied or anything for my size or whatever, but I, but I was always a shorter kid. And so, you know, I, I really worked very hard to overcome uh, any sort of perceptions that people would have about me for my size. And the idea of becoming a pro wrestler as a kid, I knew that that was some, that was a challenge I was going to have to overcome. I knew that one day I would have to overcome, uh, the way that people looked at me. And, um, and I, so I, I, I practiced that growing up and then I was able to enter the wrestling world at 17 years old. I started training, uh, and I was able to come in and, um, you know, do everything the right way. And uh, I was able to build such a body that people can't deny. I put so much work into, into literally bodybuilding um, so that nobody can look at me and say that I'm too small to be a world champion because it's just not true. And that's a wrap for this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.